Um, my name is Yael and I would like to share with you our experience with the Pace University. Um, and in order to begin somewhere, I will start by telling you a little bit about our company Biogen Cell and uh, our vision and what we did since we established the company. Uh, we are a biotech company uh, at the field of stem cell therapy, which is um, taking actually cells from our bodies and use them as a medication. Uh, pharma, the, the world of pharma and the world of biopharma is a totally different world, world than apps or even medical devices. We are talking about, take it slowly. It will take you a few years from an idea to something that can even go to animal studies. And then it will take you a few years to go from animal studies into clinics. And right now, we are working for more than two years on just this window of getting from animal studies through processing of bringing our lab to a GMP facility, into a GMP facility, good manufacturing practice uh, facility, which can run clinical studies, can produce materials in a clinical grade. So all this process is very long and very demanding. It's not only demanding from us by hours and low salaries and whatever you can imagine. It is highly demanding with respect to the investments that we need to recruit. And therefore, everything is tough. The light is at the end of the channel. We are not talking about industry or a company that is going to bring a few millions in to the house or even 100 million. No, we are talking billions and we are talking many billions. So all the spectrum is much wider and I have to put it into your understanding because you will think, what did they do? So I don't want you to think that and therefore I had to put things in perspective. So uh, in generally, we have been established in 2008, actually in 2009 and we had an idea that I will describe in a few minutes to you that cells from the blood can be used as a medication to regenerate a tissue function. The field that we uh, chose to go into is vascular diseases and we are focusing on a, a disease that names critical limb ischemia. We have patents that the company created which is not an ordinary thing in our field. In our field, most or 99.99% .99 of the patents starts from the academia. And here we have a company that started with patents of, her own, of its own. And um, we are now, as I said, completed all the preparations and are ready to, to, to enter clinical studies. We are located at the Laniado Hospital and work closely with the clinical uh, experts in the, at the Laniado Hospital. Uh, this means that we are actually sitting one door from the endocrinologist who is the expert in diabetes and diabetes complications. The other room is the uh, vascular surgeon and we understood from the very beginning that in order to create a good product, it's not enough for us as biologists to think what is good from the biology perspective. It's also very important to understand what limits the, the patients and what the patients need. And I call clinicians patients advocates because they are the mouth, they know what they suffer from, they know what they can bear, and they limit us in a way that we think is very good for us in the product development. So vascular diseases are uh, gradually uh, killing us by being blocked, and whatever tissue that has 
most of the blockage, this tissue will be harmed first. Don't worry, the others will follow. Meaning that as, as we are getting older and older, and if we are diabetic, and we are getting more and more worse, worsened with the disease, we will be with very bad blood vessels and we will be impaired in one way or another. And since we have both of these phenomena growing up, both diabetes and elderly people, it means that more and more people are going to suffer from it. Right now, we are talking about a billion people suffering from vascular diseases all over the world, and we are talking about one of each four deaths that is due to malfunction of blood vessels. And the market is enormous. You can put whatever number you, you want. We calculated it, uh, and others, uh, at 750 billion annual uh, uh, market. And of course, we are not going to approach all this market at once. So what does the uh, stem cells should do, or what do we expect them to do? We just expect them to take a blocked artery and regenerate the blood flow by creating natural bypasses. By refeeding the tissue with blood and nutrition and taking out the garbage from the tissue or unnecessary uh, elements in it, and we will restore the tissue function, prevent disability, and enable extended lifespan with a better quality of life, because there is no point in just making people alive if they don't have a quality of life. So until now, Several stem cell therapies already approached the market and many other initiatives are in some stage in the clinical development. Most of these um, initiatives are taking cells from the bone, from the bone marrow. Uh, it is this syringe that is taking the bone marrow out of the bone. This is of course done under anesthesia in uh, an operation theater in an hospital. I just said that we are talking about a billion people all over the world. So don't take billion, take 100 million. Don't take 100, take 100, 1 million. Can we take 1 million people and give them an operation room with five people on them? It would not take place, it is. Painful for the patient, of course. It is very expensive and it is not accessible, not to everyone. So for sure, we need to find other solutions. And what we had in mind is what everyone here in the room already did, once at least, a blood sample. And to be more precise, the blood sample that we take is of 250 mLs, which means whoever here ever donated blood to the Red Cross or to Magen David Adom, in our case, we are like a falafel, we take half a, a mana. <laughs> uh, it, the, the normal donation is about 450 mLs and we take 250 mLs. The reason for that is that even people with very low hemoglobin, like chronically ill patients, can give this amount of blood without any harm to them. So blood sample is very easy, it's harmless, it's low cost, it doesn't cost almost anything, and you can do it in any clinic. So we have a source material that from one hand is the most accessible, but from the other hand, it is the poorest source of stem cells. It's not as rich as the bone marrow. So what do we do? And at that stage, we thought about the idea that established Biogen cell. The idea was to use cells from the blood, take part of what they already know to do, and use it in another way that was not thought of 
until now. And we take the blood, and what we, we do is first to take cells of the immune system. They are not stem cells. Cells of the immune system are responsible for us being alive. If they were not functioning well, we were dead in about a month of life, and of course, every time afterwards. We are dependent on the immune system to recognize very fast things that are going in our body and reply to it in a way that will not need the body to be all the time active, but only when it's needed. In other words, I can tell you that this is uh, a system that I call it in Hebrew, a gossip system. One cell sees something and immediately goes to the other cell and tells him, don't ask what I saw. This is the way that the immune system works. And immediately the word is spreading out there and activate the cells that needs to go out and fight the invader. So this system has the property to very fast um, get um, molecules or uh, pathogens like bacteria or viruses, <coughs> chop them, show them on the cell surface. This is the way one cell talks to another and let other cells to know that there is something here and we must act very fast. What is, does it mean that we must act very fast? Usually, some of the cells will just multiply very fast. They don't multiply all the time because otherwise our bodies would not survive. So they only then multiply, kill the invader, and go back to a quiescent period. So what we know about the immune system is that it has the ability to upregulate itself and shut down itself, what we call tolerance. Don't respond right now. And why is it so important? Because our assumption was that since these cells of the immune ce system and the stem cells, both are starting from the bone marrow, both are going with the blood and the lymph uh, system, in the t into the tissues that are needed there. So maybe they are talking even one with each other and not only the immune cells with the immune cells and the stem cells with the stem cells. And if this is true, we will take the most professional th cells in elaborating a message and activate with them the stem cells. If we can combine them tell them to talk one with each other, we will probably get a very effective system. So first we take the immune cells, we activate them exactly to where we want. We want tissue regeneration, so we don't want, want the activation of proliferation of multiplying cells. We want them actually to be tolerating, to be quiescent. And we want them to spread the word that we need new blood vessels. So we want them to create endothelial progenitor cells. This is the professional way to say cells that will regenerate blood vessels. So we give them another peptide that does exactly that. And they chop it and will put it on their surface. While we are training them, and they are going to be our teachers, while we are training our teachers, we select the stem cells. And the way to do that is to just get rid of all the killing cells. We don't need killing when we come to do tissue regeneration. We, don't, we come in peace. So this is what we do. At that stage, we combine them together, enable the dendritic cells, the cells of the immune system, to activate and to teach the stem cells to become therapeutic cells. And then we just take what we have in the tissue culture, in the tissue culture dish, and put it into three neat syringes that are ready to use, sent to the clinician. When I started this project, I already knew that about a week is okay to grow cells and to educate them in culture. And 
as I told you, I assumed that if we will use immune cells, it will be more efficient. It came out that I started with three days because I was sure it's very efficient. And after, in biology, after you have something, you always challenge it. Maybe three days is not enough, maybe three days is too much. And then you do a kinetics, one, day one, day two, day seven, etc. And the cells taught me that one day is enough. That in one day and in three days, we get the same product. And also, at that point, we started to challenge ourselves and ask for blood donations, not only from healthy people, but also from diabetic people. And also from diabetic people who are very, very sick, chronically sick patients, actually the most a severe one was already on dialysis when she donated the cells to us. And what we, find out, we found out is that the technology enables us the following advantages. We can use a simple blood row of 250 ml. We don't need any pretreatment. As you are sitting now, you could have your blood drawn and we could use it. It is rapid. And not only it is rapid, it is robust, meaning that we have an equation, a biological equation, to say you will take 100 cells of this plus 200 cells of that, and you will get, not 300, don't be worried, it's biology, you will get something like 80 million cells, exactly the cells that you want. And those can then be served as a medication. We do it from the same patient. It's what we call autologous. It's self, meaning that the patient will give his own blood and we will work on his own blood. But since we are doing the same procedure again and again and again, it means that right now I am getting into the clean room, doing only one patient, Tomorrow I will get into the clean room with another patient doing exactly the same thing again. And this, of course, brings us to say, what? It's like the operation room and taking blood. Why do you need it? You don't need yourself. You need an automation. You need a machine. So this is our vision of how to take it on. We will not create the machine right now because we first need to show that the cells as are effective in the human body the same as they are effective in animals. So in order to tell you that, I need to tell you what disease we, we chose and, how we are, and what we tested in animal studies. So uh, we chose to treat critical limb ischemia because it's a model disease for many things. The first one is the disease itself. It's the same disease that happens in the brain and in the leg and in the heart. And it's also a, um, a tool to show how you can work with the FDA with respect to something that is, using, is used for a disease which have no cure and we have to face it in a very fast manner. And when I say we, it's not my company, it's the society. Because the uh, burden, the economical burden, is enormous. Only this disease, most of you probably never heard of, uh, is a market of 50 billion a year, with saving of $3 billion a year to the medical, to the insurance in the States, uh, when we will be successful. So this is what we did in animals. We cut the uh, artery. Can you do that? Uh, we cut the artery out and then injected the cells. And this is what happens. This is the uh, before we have um, the treatment, the control, and the stem cells. And immediate, uh, 14 days after we inject the cells, this is the control. And this is what happens with the blood flow of the injected animals, which means that they are 
they gained their blood vessels back. So at this point, we met, when we were at this point, we met the Pace uh, University team head headed by uh, Bruce and we met her home, we met friends. Bruce is actually accompanying us till today. We are getting to him with questions. Always get the very comprehensive um, overview of what is needed to be looked at and what is needed to be done, how to make it more attractive, how to talk about your uh, initiatives. And we worked with very uh, closely with John um, and uh, uh, Bruce talked about it before. We started to analyze our market, to understand better our market, and to create the basis for the business plan. So, um, and of course, other benefits is that we really have a home in New York City. If I want today to create a meeting in New York City, I have where to sit. And it's great because many people are meeting in a cafe shop and you can't discuss our pro uh, project in a cafe shop most of the times. It's not something that I can explain in one sentence usually. Well, to say uh, the list of blood is a source of your own uh, therapy is great, but what is it? So uh, we, are, uh, we worked with PACE on that. And this is the results of what we did with PACE after a lot of research. We found out exactly where we have, what patients we have, what patients we want to uh, address. First of all, the critical limb ischemia, but these are million people, and this is the market of $15 billion. But after we get to this very severely diseased people, we can go backwards to intermittent claudication, people who just start to walk and stop because they don't have any more energy to walk. This is a disease, it's very harmful, but this is not the disease like critical limb ischemia in which the, the patient is going to be amputated in a few months. So it's not the same, but the market is eight times more. And again, whenever we will be successful, we will reduce for every such a patient at least 75% of the cost that the insurance is paying him. And when I'm saying that the insurance is Kupat Cholim, is in the States, is Medicare. So the health, um, the health authorities are benefiting from such a therapy that should enable us to penetrate the market, the big market, much faster. And as I said, it's good enough to do it in clinical studies from the clean room that we work in today. But the future must be automation. And this is the perspective of how many uh, um, patients we can treat and what is the um, as assumed uh, income flow. Again, done with John, with the calculations based on the um, uh, inputs that we gave him from production and what is happening and what size of teams we need. And you can see very clearly that as long as we will work manually, not that it is not an, uh, enough, a big number, $330 million a year, but this is not where we need to be. There are so many more patients that are waiting for us. So this company should not stop in treating only those that can afford it. We need to bring it to be much more affordable. And this is our task. And thanks to Pace University, we are now able to show it in a very clear way to investors. We are biologists. Most of what we do, we know. We know to anticipate. We know to envision. But we don't know how to talk with business people. And this, thanks to you, upgraded us a lot. So thank you, Bruce. And uh, as I told you, after this disease, we can go to different uh, areas. And not only outside, inside, uh, thanks to the team. Maurice here, Maurice, the 
head of our production, uh, GMP production facility. And uh, thanks to all the efforts inside and outside, we are now stepping surely, still slowly, too slowly, uh, into our horizon of providing cell therapy to everybody in need. Thank you. because I've never like, seen this type of, coming from the high tech and this is uh, kind of in inspiring. Um, do you think the people from extreme groups like uh, hemophilia, uh, like people who have hemophilia or G6PD could also uh, benefit from this? Or yeah. Uh, actually, maybe yes. I don't know enough about these diseases, but um, the diseases that you mentioned, usually the head has a, have a, um, a genetic background. And where you have a genetic background, there is another industry, just like the cell therapy, which is the gene therapy, that is also becoming much more matured with the ears, with respect to safety. We used to think that inserting genes into our cells is, yes, promising, but very frightening with the side effects. So now, more and more gene therapy studies are coming in, and the tools to, to address cells with genes and control them are becoming much and much more efficient. And I believe that these two areas are going to change, totally change, the way that healthcare is looked today. <laughs>